Hi friends, today I'm going to read a story called Bippity Bop Barber Shop. It's about a little boy named Miles who goes to the barber shop to get his first haircut. It's written by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Now this is the same author and illustrator who wrote the story, I Love My Hair. And in this story, Bippity Bop Barbershop, Miles mentions his sister, Kiana. Now we know that this is Kiana because we've listened to this story. So if you haven't listened to the story, you might want to go back and listen to it, okay? Because it's by the same author and the same illustrator. Okay, let's get started. Bippity Bop Barbershop by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley. Illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Bippity Bop Barber Shop. Early Saturday morning, Daddy comes to wake me with our secret knock. Bippity Beep Bop Bop. Bippity beep bop bop. You up, little man? Daddy pokes his head into my room. I'm up, I say excitedly and jump out of bed. I can hardly wait. I'm going to get my first haircut at the barber shop today. Mama and my sister Kiana are still asleep. Daddy and I have the house all to ourselves. Quietly, Daddy and I dress in matching blue jeans and gym shoes, then head outside. We turn onto Main Street and stop at Jack's Sweet Shop. Daddy orders a gooey cinnamon roll and black coffee and a glazed donut and chocolate milk for me. Miles is getting his first haircut at the barber shop today, Daddy tells Mr. J. Is that so? Mr. J asks, leaning over the counter. I nod yes. This calls for a celebration. I'll make your milk a double. Mr. J pours chocolate milk into a tall cup. Be brave, little man, he says as he hands it to me. We eat as we walk. Up ahead, I see the green and yellow awning and the white letters on the window that say, Seymour's Barbershop. Next to the door is a short white barber's pole. It has red stripes, which curl and swirl around it like strange fish swimming in a sea of white. And there's Mr. Seymour in the window with his wild gray hair, dusting off his big shiny chair. Mr. Seymour has been Daddy's barber since Daddy was a kid like me. Now he'll be my barber too. Inside, the shop is crowded. Daddy stops to whisper something to Mr. Seymour, and then we walk to the back of the shop to find a seat. Hey there, Charles. Hey there, little man. What's going on? People call out as we pass. First haircut? One of the men asks me. I nod yes. Nothing to it, he says. Just got to be brave. All these people are telling me to be brave but I don't know exactly what they mean. What does brave mean, Daddy? I ask. It just means that you're not afraid, Daddy says. When we sit down, I practice being brave. As Daddy and I wait our turn, we watch two men playing checkers. Slap! One of the men slams his checker on the board. King me, he shouts with his arms raised high. Another group of men is clustered around the television at the back of the shop watching a basketball game. Come on, man, shoot the ball. What are you waiting for? Pass it, pass it, foul. That was a foul. The ref must be blind. Whew, that boy can fly, one man cheers when his favorite player finally makes a basket.
jazz, music, loud voices, and laughter blend with the bzzz of clippers and the soft swish, swish whisper of scissors skimming loose hairs from a freshly cut head. I look at the men in the row of chairs in front of me. I can see their faces in the long mirror that runs along an entire wall of the shop. The man in Mr. Seymour's chair is getting his head shaved. Take it all off, he says. A patch of sunlight gleams right on top of his bald head. Another man has long, thick dreadlocks. He's getting a shave with a straight razor. When he leans all the way back in the chair, his locks almost touch the floor. The next man is getting his hair cut low all around. The clippers go back and forth, dipping and gliding across his head, making smooth waves that ripple through his hair. In the last chair, there's a kid, a little older than me, getting his big, curly afro trimmed. Just a little off the sides, he says. But none of the styles I see look like me. After a while, Mr. Seymour points toward Daddy and me and calls my name. Me? I look at Daddy and then at Mr. Seymour and then at Daddy again. You go first, Miles, he says, and pats me on the shoulder. Be brave, little man. I can hear my heartbeat in my ears and my knees feel wobbly, but I stand up and walk over to the chair. Mr. Seymour helps me up. The chair is so high. Then he drapes a big, wide cape over me to catch the loose hairs. What style would you like for your first haircut, little man? Mr. Seymour asks. I shrug my shoulders. I don't know. Hairstyles. Mr. Seymour shows me a poster hanging on the wall with pictures of all kinds of different styles, but I still don't see any that look like me. I take one more look around the shop, and when I see Daddy, I know right away which style I want. Cut low on top and shaved clean all around, just like his. I whisper to Mr. Seymour, and he goes to work. Mr. Seymour takes out his pick. He picks my hair until it is fluffy and stands up high. Then, with his scissors, he begins to cut my hair just like Mama used to do at home. But when he finishes with the pick and scissors, I hear him turn the clippers on. My heart starts beating fast again. Will the clippers hurt? What if Mr. Seymour accidentally cuts off my ear? The loud buzzing noise is coming closer. Then I feel a tickle creeping up the back of my neck. I get so scared, I duck down as low as I can go in the chair and throw the cape over my head. I peek out from under the cape when Mr. Seymour turns the clippers off. Daddy is squatting beside me. I tried to be brave, but I didn't know how, I say with tears in my eyes. You know, I was scared when I got my first haircut, Daddy says, and wipes my tears away. You were? I say with my eyes open wide. Daddy nods. But I'll tell you a trick. Pretend that you're a giant, so tall your head touches the sky. And the buzzing of the clippers is just the sound of airplanes zooming by. Or maybe you're a superhero, saving the earth from a swarm of killer bees. Try it. I promise you won't be afraid anymore. So I close my eyes and think about giants and my favorite superheroes. But I can't picture any of them getting a haircut. Then I remember watching Daddy get his haircut, the way he sits up tall and closes his eyes halfway, like he doesn't have a care in the world. 
I think about how brave Daddy is, and I get brave too. When Mr. Seymour turns the clippers back on, I imagine that I have Daddy's long legs and wide shoulders. I sit up straight like Daddy, though I still squeeze the arms of the chair tightly. And when Mr. Seymour is through, there is a brand new me staring back from the mirror. Mr. Seymour rubs a dab of a sweet-smelling blue aftershave on my face and the back of my neck. It feels like a cool breeze. Then he dips a brush in powder and gently sweeps it over my head and neck. Daddy takes his seat in Mr. Seymour's chair. And when Mr. Seymour asks him how he wants his hair, Daddy says that he wants a haircut just like mine. Daddy wants to look like me. When Mr. Seymour is finished, Daddy and I smile at each other in the mirror. You sure we're not twins? Daddy asks, raising one eyebrow. On the way out, some of the other men in the shop hold their hands up to me for high fives. Looking sharp, man, they say. Guess I can't call you little man anymore, Miles. You're one of the big boys now, Mr. Seymour says, and shakes my hand. See you next time. I hum a happy, proud song as we leave Mr. Seymour's shop. Bippity bop, bippity beep bop bop. Daddy picks up the tune. He walks to the rhythm of our music. Two cool cats side by side.